and we know about the Grinch, but how in the world did the Grinch get his Grinchiness, right? Like, um, it, we're, we're going to be talking this morning as we're in this series called Christmas at the Movies. We're going to go through some movies over the next three weeks, um, and we have got our posters up here, uh, Home Alone and Elf and, uh, and the Grinch is who we're going to be talking about. And, and, uh, and this time of year, you know, we, we, we get those moments where it's like, all right, movie night, you know, let's all get our PJs on and we cuddle around and, and we watch our favorite Christmas movies. Or I know some of you in the room, you're like Hallmark Christmas movie people. You know what I'm talking about? It's like every end is a kiss and everything's great, right? And it's like, you have to see that because it's not real life. You know, it warms your heart for a moment and then, and then, uh, and then your husband farts, right? And it's just like, that's life, <laughs> you know? Um, so like, we, we love the imagination. We love the nostalgia. We love, you know, the romanticness of holidays. We love... But the reality is, you know, life isn't always that great, is it? Life isn't always, like, pretty and perfect. Some of you are still laughing because it's true. <clears throat> and some of you husbands are laughing because you're not the one doing it. All right. Um, <laughs> welcome to New Hope. <laughs> if it's your first time with us, we get real around here. Um, that's why we see no perfect people allowed. Um, so, so we think about this movie, the Grinch movie, right? And it's been remade and remade, and now there's three kind of renditions of it, right? They got the cartoon, and then you got the Jim Carrey one in 2000, and then I think it was last year was then the, the cartoon, the animation came out, and, um, and they all have a little twist on the story and their own kind of little, you know, differences of the story. But there's this kind of main theme, though, it's, and it's the Grinch. It's the story of the Grinch. This, uh, this, this person who is, who is angry and grumpy and frustrated and, and bitter and and hides away by himself in a cave. And, um, and, and he, I, I love that scene because he's like talking about all the things that annoy him about Christmas. I think all of us could probably say some of those same things, right? And, and when he goes, the noise, the noise, the noise, 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 right? It's like, I don't know if you have family gatherings where it is. It's just like the volume's up to 11 and, and everybody's hanging out and it's just gonna be really loud and crazy. And then if, if you've got kids, maybe you have the grandparents who are punishing you by buying really noisy toys for your kids, right? And then they leave, and you go, ear, ear, and you hear all the, the crazy noises. And it can get a little overwhelming, a little crazy. Um, and, and, and so I think about the Grinch. He's, he's up in the cave by himself, and he's lonely, and he's got this poor cute dog that's mistreated, right? And if you love pets, that whole thing just drives you nuts the entire movie. You're like, don't do that to the dog, you know, not the dog. You're not worried about the kids or the who's. You're worried about the dog. And, um, and, and, and the thing is, this time of year, some of us may feel that way sometimes, friendless and grumpy. And, and then we try to hide away into a cave. And um, I'm going to misquote Shakespeare because he, he uses the word greatness. But I think when we think about the story of the Grinch, and I think about some of us and just the things we go through at Christmas, this, this, is, this is a rephrase of a Shakespeare quote. I think some are born Grinchy, some achieve Grinchiness, and some have Grinchiness thrust upon them, right? Like, like sometimes the circumstances of life bring that grumpy, Grinchy kind of attitude into our life. Um, we were talking in, a, in one of the classes we had this week about Walmart at Christmas, and, um, and, and uh, there's not too many good words uh, there because we were, my mother-in-law actually at one point worked, worked in the toy department at Walmart during Christmas, and she's still a Christian. I don't know how that happened, <laughs> right? she still believes in Jesus. Um, maybe she had to really lean on Jesus all the more during that season. But the thing is, is that, that we think this time should be full of joy and happiness, and we're getting, you know, fun things, you know, and, and presents. And, and, uh, and the reality is the people I see can be crazy, right? People get crazy, and people get hurt, and, and, and wounds come up, and broken situations don't get better usually during the holidays. They get amplified. And so the wounds between relationships can actually get worse in this season, and and, uh, and people either separate or run apart, and all sorts of bad things happen and can happen. And, and, uh, and, and, and so it, it, we live in this weird dichotomy of, of the joy of it and then the fear and the grinchiness of it. And, and how, do we, how do we live into that, you know, as Christ followers? How, how do we walk into this season um, and, 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 not, and not be a grinch? There have been Christmases where I have, I have been that Grinch. There's been Chris, Christmases where like, oh, the Christmas music started way too soon. You know, some of you are with me on that one, right? Like, it's just like, it's the same songs over and over and over and over and over again. And, and I remember there was a couple Christmases like, can we please not? Can we just not? And, uh, and, and it was my problem. It wasn't the Christmas songs problem, right? It was that I, there was something inside of me that was like, I don't want this. I don't want this. Ugh. And it just was frustrating me. And I became a Grinch. 
Luckily, I'm not this year. I'm not being grinchy and, and, uh, or anything like that. And man, this morning, I love singing Christmas songs. I love worshiping with the songs that we did this morning and, and new Christmas songs, like pro- proclaiming the name of Jesus and, and who he is. And, and so, but we can live in that tension, right? Um, I don't know if you've ever experienced this at, at, at holidays when it's time to put up the lights and, and you're all excited about Christmas decorations and you're ready for it and you go down to, and you get the boxes and you get everything set up and you plug in the light strand and half of them are off. Grinch, right? Right then, right in that moment. Have you ever had to hunt for a bulb out of a strand of like 3,000, you know? I'm going to Big Lots, right? I'm going to go get some new lights. Um, that, those things can happen during this season, right? Um, or even just trying to unravel some of the lights, or if you drive in the parking lots this time of year, uh, I'm not going to judge, but there are some white-haired people that just go crazy at Christmas in parking lots, and, uh, and we almost hit three of them on Friday. I mean, like, I, like, that was a stop sign. No, it wasn't. All right, here we go. So you just have to be on the defense, you know? It's like, okay, I'm just temperature down. So there, things happen, you know? Craziness can come in. Uh, during the season, it's interesting when you look at the, the Jim Carrey version of the Grinch. They, they give a backstory, you know, of, of why they think the Grinch is so Grinchy. And it's something that happened, a wound from his childhood. When he was trying to fit in and he was trying to impress the girl that he loved and, and he shaved and it was a hack job and he made a present and it was not that great of a present and everybody just made fun of him and, and boom, something triggered in his heart. And from that point on, he chose Grinch, right? And the reality is, some of us in this room, we have a wound that turned us into a Grinch, not just this time of year, but maybe throughout the year. And, uh, and it may be something God wants to work on. Maybe something that God wants to bring out so there can be healing. There can be freedom. <clears throat> There's so many people who experience two main things, and th- these are the Grinches I'm talking about this morning. And if you've got your worship programs, you can fill in the notes. Um, and, uh, and, and the thing is for us, I think the two Grinches at, of Christmas that people experience the most is stress and loneliness are probably the two big ones. Stress and loneliness. Um, and so those are the two we're going to talk about this morning, the two, two, the two Grinches of Christmas that are trying to pull us away into a cave and cause bitterness and, and all sorts of things in our life, just like the Grinch. Stress and loneliness can do that. And it can be a difficult season for a lot of people because maybe some, some of you lost a loved one, and this is the first holiday. Or for some of us, we lost a loved one a long time ago, but it just is that annual reminder that they're not there <clears throat> and they're not with you. And it could be that uh, it brings up a broken relationship or a dysfunctional family situation that you're going to have to walk into again and all the anxiety that comes from that. And for some, it, it brings up the complexities of split families and divorces and who has kids when and, and just all the complexities attached to all those kind of relationships. Some of us have military family who aren't home for Christmas and they're missed and, and they're not around. And um, It can be a, a, a very stressful and a very lonely time of year. And, uh, and, and we can experience this, absolutely, stress and loneliness uh, for real. I think another danger this time of year is social media. I mean, social media is a real thing. We all, I don't know if we all do it, but if you don't, um, you're probably healthier than the others that, that, that scroll because everybody has perfect Christmas cookies, you know? Like everybody has the great decorations and, and the Christmas. See, Christmas cards are great. I have no problem with like sending and receiving and getting Christmas cards. Actually, people that send them to us, we put them up on the side of our refrigerator and we go back and we pray for people throughout the year. And, and so we've got Christmas all year long on the side of our fridge. Um, but sometimes those Christmas pictures look so good, right? They just look like, wow, I need a haircut, you know, or something like, or I need to lose something, and it's, and hopefully it's not my hair, you know, or it's, it's like, you, you see, you see other people's perfection, but you really don't know what's going on, because you're seeing the highlight reel, not the behind the scenes, right? And so, so often we can judge ourselves by somebody's highlight reels when we're living our behind the scenes, and, uh, and we don't know what's going on behind the scenes of a perfect picture or the perfect cookie or the perfect decoration. Or the and, uh, and it can be challenging uh, financially. I mean, stress 
financially for a lot of family this is like the most stressful season of ever you know it's like i gotta figure out how to do this we got, did we save do we not save do we use a credit card do we like how do we make all this stuff happen we got to do and the parties we got to go to and it just it can build and build and build until we become the grinch at christmas um see the grinch the 2000 version um he got himself so far settled in his grinchiness because of his wound and because of all the things he experienced he just wanted to be alone right He's just like, I'm, I'm done with all this. I'm climbing the mountain, me and my dog, and we're just going to be hanging out. And, uh, and I want you to see how that worked out for him. Go ahead and watch this. Yes! Down a size and a half! This time, I'll keep it all. Get the stick! Get the stick! <laughs> There's no stick. I'm smarter. Any calls? You have no messages. Odd. Better check the outgoing. If you utter so much as one syllable, I'll hunt you down and gut you like a fish! If you'd like to fax me, press the star key. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, well. <laughs> That's more like it. <laughs> Mm. Excellent, yeah. I'll tell you, Max, I don't know why I ever leave this place. I've got all the company I need right here. Hello! Hello! How are you? How are you? How are you? I asked you first. Oh, that's really mature, saying exactly what I can. I'm an idiot! You're an idiot! You're an idiot! All right, fine. I'm not talking to you anymore. In fact, I'm going to whisper so that by the time my voice reverberates off the walls and gets back to me, I won't be able to hear it. Am I just eating because I'm bored? Sometimes we need somebody to tell us that, right? You're an idiot. You're an idiot. <laughs> like, a, like we do stupid things sometimes, you know? And, um, and, and when we're talking about this, these grinches of stress and loneliness, none of us should get there, right? N we should never get there. Uh, let our emotions go so far that we just run away and, uh, and fool ourselves that we don't need anybody else. The reality is you were made to need other people. That's how you were created. God made every single one of us relational beings. And, uh, and, and that's why he calls the church the body of Christ, because we need everybody. Like, we need each other. Uh, we need to encourage one another. We need to walk beside each other. And so, so the first thing I want to talk about is this, this idea of loneliness. And, and the thing that God gives us and has said to us during this Christmas season to help us push away from loneliness, okay? And this is it. This is what we need to experience in our life. We need to experience God's presence, Okay? To remove the Grinch of loneliness, we need to step into God's presence. His presence is a promise for Christmas, right? Like, that's, that's what he promised. That was the promise for all of the Old Testament, that a Messiah was coming and God was going to show up in a new way and that he would be present. He would be with us. That is the promise. And so for us, when we're talking about removing that Grinch of loneliness, we've got to learn to and start stepping into and starting inviting into our life God's presence, right? 
because that is his presence to us, is his presence for us. Now, there's, there's different types of separation, right? There's different types of loneliness that we can experience in life. And the three types of separation can be separation from God, which is the most dangerous one of all. Like, it's, it's that you run away from God, you don't want anything to do with God. Like, maybe some of you think God doesn't even exist. And so separation from God is like, boom, I'm, I'm done with it. I'm done with him, I've, and I don't want anything to do with him. That's a dangerous separation, right? And some of us in our life, we've done that in a season of our life, or, or maybe we're coming back because we've been far from him for a, a, the majority of our life, because that is dangerous. Separation from God will produce loneliness in your life. It will. The second time is separation from others. That's kind of like what the Grinch did. It's like, I'm tired of others. I'm out of here, and boom, I'm going to separate myself from relationships. Uh, I've been hurt too much over here, and so what I've learned, because of all my wounds, is to not go over here anymore. I'm going to go by myself. I, I'm self-sustaining. I'm self-supportive. I got everything to myself. And, and so then we separate ourselves from others. That's, that's a whole other level of loneliness, right? And the last one is actually separation from yourself. And this one is, I'm not going to this one. This is a deep one, because that's even like separating your own, your, your own soul from your own life. That, that there's so much packed down in there, that you just never want to deal with it, and you just put a lid on it and pretend it doesn't exist, and you separate yourself from your actual reality, and you live in this imaginary world. That's, that's probably the greatest danger. If you're all by yourself, and God is nowhere, and you have no way to process who you really are, that's going to be ultimate loneliness, and you don't have to go there. You don't have to be there, especially during this time of year, don't go there. Don't go into that room, right? Don't, don't go into those places of just absolute loneliness. And so we're going to learn that God's promise is that he chose to not be separated from us. That's the Christmas story. <laughs> he chose to send his son down the ladder of heaven to be present with us. That's a promise. And then he said, now I want you to be present with one another, to be connected with other people to find hope, encouragement, to be spurred on to grow and to get healthy so that you can really know who you are in Christ. You can really know who God has made you to be and find healing from those wounds that would cause you to run away. This is all part of the Christmas story. This is actually a lot of the people that uh, you see in the Christmas story. We're not going to go into a lot of the individual stories. Um, we're doing one of these three things in their life. And God met them right where they were. The reality with this one, and when we get to this time of year, this others and yourself, is this reality is that hurt people hurt people, right? We will hurt other people by the wounds we have received. And, uh, and we can in turn push people to loneliness because we're pushing them as a Grinch <laughs> away from you and, and creating new wounds in their life. And, and it just gets messy. It can just get so messy. <clears throat> But here's the promise, okay? This is the passage that's the promise. In Matthew 1, it says this, The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which is what we just sung, right? Emmanuel, which means, say this with me, God with us. His name is God with us. <laughs> that's, his, that's, that's the name of our Savior, that he came and he is with us. <clears throat> that we don't have to be alone. We don't have to feel lonely. We don't have to wallow ourselves in a place where we become the Grinch in a cave. Like Jesus came to be with us. Wherever that is, he is there. That's the promise of God. Whether we're in a pit or we're flying high as a kite and things are great and life is great and wherever it is, like in between, he is with us in our life. That is the promise of Christmas. So I'm going to give you some really practical things, okay? And, and I said this series is going to be a little bit more lighthearted. It's going to be very practical. Um, and, and so I, I want to talk about this uh, very practically. If you feel lonely, here's your encouragement, okay? Don't linger in the house of loneliness. Don't hang out there. When you feel yourself heading that direction, don't say, boy, I'm just going to get comfy in my cave. Don't, don't start talking to the echo, you know, don't. So don't, don't linger in the house of loneliness. Instead, accept the promise of God's pr presence. Don't linger in the house of loneliness. Accept the promise of God's presence. Be willing to receive His presence in your life. 
Be willing to invite him every single moment of your, your feeling of loneliness. Say, God, let me know you're here. Let me know you're with me. Show that you are here. Show that you are with me. And as you do that, he will. He will show you that he's there. And, and it may be in the smallest little ways that he shows up in something just to say, hey, I'm here. I'm right here. I haven't left you. I'm not going to forsake you. I'm not going to run away. I am with you. And trust me, when I see all the parables that Jesus talked about and the lost things, the things that have been lost or the, the children that run away, Jesus goes after them. He doesn't leave you be. So he'll follow you into that room of loneliness and he will be with you. What I'm saying is you're never alone. You're never alone. So how do you know if you're going down an, a, a very unhealthy path of loneliness. Well, I th there's a difference between two, two ideas here. Because there's a big difference between solitude and seclusion, okay? There's a big difference between solitude and seclusion. And this isn't in your notes. If you want to write this down, you can. But seclusion is what leads to real loneliness, okay? Solitude, for us as Christ followers, this is the idea of getting away. Like we see Jesus as a habit, as a regular habit. Every morning he said he would get up really early morning. He would leave everybody else and he would find a quiet place to be with his heavenly father. And he would pray and, and, and just be in his presence. That's called solitude. That's finding a quiet place in the midst of a busy life, right? That is a spiritual habit that all of us should have. And actually when we walk into that and we find solitude in our lives, it actually makes us experience the promise of God's presence every single day. Because we're inviting him every morning. God, I want your presence in my day. I know it's going to get crazy here, 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 and I know I have this conversation coming. I want your presence today. And so you're inviting it right from the get-go. Instead of choosing the morning, I'm just grumpy, I'm tired, I haven't had my coffee. A lot of us use coffee as an excuse to be a Grinch, and you need to cut that out, all right? Like, that's just an excuse. Stop being a jerk, okay? Coffee doesn't fix being a jerk. Um, just be nice, would you, right? Like, so like get into God's presence. Coffee's not the solution Jesus is, okay? This is what I'm saying. Solitude is a healthy practice that we all should experience as Christ followers on a daily basis. Seclusion is different. Seclusion is, is when we um, isolate ourselves from other people. Seclusion is, I don't want to feel this around these people, so that means I'm going to seclude myself from those people and just stay away. I'm going to isolate myself. And what we're trying to do is we're actually trying to isolate the emotion from being around those certain people. And the reality, that emotion isn't going anywhere. <clears throat> it's still going to be there. It's still going to be hanging out <laughs> if you're trying to seclude yourself. It's not until you deal with that emotion with Jesus in his presence that he will walk you into healing so you can be around those people again. We need to walk as Christ followers during this season, especially when there's stress and loneliness, into solitude, into God's presence, inviting it every day, not into seclusion, running away because there's emotions attached to those people or that circumstance or this situation, and so I'm going to run to my cave, right? The Grinch still had the same emotions in the cave, didn't he? The ones that happened when he was a kid never went away because he didn't have God's presence and he didn't have others' presence to help him into healing. We want to experience healthy solitude, but we do not want to walk into seclusion. We cannot linger in the house of loneliness. We've got to walk into the promise of God's presence. Is everybody with me? Okay, I, again, I'm just trying to be very practical because the enemy, Satan, is alive He's, he, is, he is a ruler over this world that we live in. That's why all the brokenness. And, um, and, and he loves to steal, kill, and destroy. He loves to get us in the corner. And when we're lonely, I, there's this verse that it says he's, he's like a lion looking around to devour someone. It, he loves finding ones by themselves. It's easier to snatch a sheep by himself than go to the whole herd, right? That lion's looking for the straggler. And when we put ourselves in seclusion and loneliness, the enemy's like, that's the one I'm going for. That's the weak one in the corner. Ha, ha, ha. And he'll just start devouring you. And you'll start hearing the lies. You'll start playing out scenarios in your head, and you'll start blaming other people, and you'll get into self-destruction. You'll soothe your pain with sinful habits. 
Like, I love the word he says, am I just eating because I'm bored? You know, like, like, <laughs> like a guilty as charged, right? Like, we can feed our emotions actual food, and we're just really filling our stomach, not our emotions. We can use alcohol. I think that happens a lot during the holidays is smoking, the nervousness, I got to go outside. You're seeking quiet, um, and, a, and a few puffs or it could be, you know, pornography or it could be shopping or scrolling on social. It could be fill in the blank, right? We go in the corner of loneliness and then we try to feed our souls with things that steal from our souls. That's what the enemy wants to do when we jump into the land of seclusion. Do not linger in the house of loneliness, right? Walk into the promise of God's presence. He is with you. And I'll assure you, he probably has some good people around you that you need to go to. So often in, the, in loneliness, we make excuses. Well, I don't want, I don't want to bother them or I don't want to talk to or I don't want to. I'm telling you, there's some good people that want to walk beside you as well. And, uh, and especially if you are deep in the pit of loneliness to the point of depression or those kind of things, get help immediately. Like, give us a call. That's why we have Pastor Jim here on staff as a counselor. Like, he helps people walk into freedom. We, we can help. We know other people that can help. We want to help, okay? That's what I'm saying. There's no reason to hang out in the cave by yourself there are too many things that we use to try to make ourselves comfortable rather than receiving our comfort from god himself this is a lesson and this is a phrase that those of you who are going through our equip self-leadership training that they walked through this that so often we try to use things to comfort ourselves or make ourselves comfortable like the grinch sitting on the chair <laughs> In reality, we're just soothing something that's not going away. We need to receive the comfort of our Heavenly Father, not of a chair, not of a drink, not of a look, not of a, we need to receive God's comfort in His presence. There's nothing better as a son or as a daughter of Christ, as our Heavenly Father, to be comforted by Him. This is who He is. This is a psalm. In Psalm 68, 5 through 6, it says, A father to the fatherless, a defender of widows is God in his holy dwelling. Do you hear this? This is describing our Heavenly Father, the one who sent his Son. This is who he is. He is a father to the fatherless. He is a defender of widows. Is the God, is God in his holy dwelling. God sets lonely, the lonely in families. Do you know how he does that? It's called the church, y'all. We're the family. You belong to something. He leads out the prisoners with singing. He frees people. But the rebellious live in a sun-scorched land. He's like, those that run away from God, welcome to the desert. Welcome to the cave dwelling, right? Welcome to loneliness. He's saying, run to this heavenly Father who promises to be with us. Don't linger in the house of loneliness. Accept the promise of God's presence. So that's the first thing, okay? That's how we get rid of loneliness. Now, I want to talk about the second thing because this one's probably for all of us in the room and it has to do with stress. <laughs> I think we, it, it, it's, you ask people anytime, how are you doing? Some people just say good. And <clears throat> it's funny because a lot of the answers are busy. It's like, how are you doing? Busy? It's not an answer to how you're doing, right? That's what you're doing. You're just busy, right? Like, how are you doing in the busy? Stressed, right? Is typically what you see on people's faces, especially during this time of year. They're just stressed out. Um, the reality is the Grinch, none of his plans were working out too well in the stress department, were they? He was just continually getting more and more stressed out, and then he had to come up with a plan, and that, that creepy grin, you know, the cartoon version, well, even the Jim Carrey version. It's just creepy grin, like, I've got a plan to ruin everybody. So he's letting stress, now I'm going to take it out on everybody else. <laughs> and that's what stress does, doesn't it? Stress usually spills over to the people who are closest to us, and and, uh, and they're the ones that want to hit us the most, you know? Like, <laughs> like, like chill out. Um, the enemy does not want us to have peace, but if we want to get rid of the Grinch of stress, we have to walk into God's peace. It's different. See, we think peace is, is based upon circumstances, right? Like, when everything's settled down and after Christmas is over and, like, we got, like, that day in between, like, Christmas and New Year's, maybe we can have some peace for that day. Can be a little quiet, you know, and like, ooh, or 
I need to go on a vacation because there I can find peace. But the reality is all those things are temporary, right? Like those are temporary solutions to a problem that's bigger. If we live a stressed out, stressful life, um, our circumstances aren't going to change. There will be another thing coming that will stress us out. See, God's peace is different than that. What, what we sing about in the Christmas carols and what we read in the scriptures and what, what was promised to us and to the world is, is a peace that goes beyond our circumstances. In the Old Testament, and, and you, uh, we sang about this in Isaiah 9-6, and we read of it during the worship time, um, we're given this promise, these names of, of the Messiah that's coming. And these promise and these names, he says, for, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, a Mighty God, Everlasting Father. Say this last one with me. The Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace. The Bringer of Peace. The One who has the crown of peace. And He, he did it. He brought it. This proclamation in the book of Isaiah was the prophecy of a Messiah that they were waiting for. Hundreds of years waiting for this Messiah to come make everything right. We live on the other side of that history, which is awesome. We don't understand how spoiled we are in the season that we live in, that we have the Spirit poured out upon us, God's presence inside of us, and that we're supposed to be experiencing the promise from this Prince of Peace in us. 700 years later, this prophecy came into fruition. 700 years in the city that was proclaimed before in the small town of Bethlehem. Consider yourself blessed because out of you is going to come this Messiah. I don't know, how many of you picked where you were going to be born? I was born in Bowling Green, Ohio. It's the flattest part of the state, okay? I didn't pick that. I would have picked Hawaii or something cool, right? Like, maybe I would have had a better tan, but that didn't happen. Uh, we don't pick where we were born. Jesus didn't pick where, God picked where Jesus was going to be born, in Bethlehem. We see all these prophecies in the Old Testament, and all of them fulfilled in one person, Jesus. How can I trust the promises of the Prince of Peace? Because he delivers upon his promises. The God of prophecy showed up in the God of promise and peace. And so we see that promise come later on in the, in the book of Luke, when Jesus showed up, and we see the scene where the shepherds were on the side of this field and the angels showed up and he said, good news. First he says, don't be afraid, because that's what angels do. They say, don't be afraid. And he says, good news. I got, this is amazing news that you're going to hear. And then it says this. It says, after the great news came to the shepherds and they're just like already in awe from the angel, all of a sudden a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel. Like, a heavenly choir. Ah, right? And then it's like, what are they going to sing? I mean, what's the song that comes out in the proclamation of the Messiah coming? What are they going to proclaim in this moment? Because this is a big deal. These words matter. And he says, there, the angels say this, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, what? Peace. And on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. And he's making this proclamation to dirty shepherds on the side of a field. This was not the holy. This wasn't the priests doing their ministry. He's like, you, you get this word. You get this message. You get to hear the choir for the first time proclaiming what's happening in this moment. This Messiah, the good news that's coming, he is here and he is being born. And we're praising God because that's the glory he gets it. In the highest heaven, because that's where he is seated, and on earth. So they're talking about heaven, and now they're saying, now, what's going to happen on earth? We know what the glory is happening in heaven. That's who God is. He is surrounded in glory. But on earth, peace. Peace. Now, some people, when they think of that, they're like, well, then why is there still war? You know, why, are there, why is there still you know, hatred? Why is there still you know, all sorts of bad things in this, in this world? Um, he hasn't finished yet. He's still building his church. He's still calling people to salvation. And this peace 
has nothing to do right now with there being no more wars. The promise of this peace is on those whom his favor rests. To receive the favor of God resting upon you starts with a proclamation of the gospel in your life. It's the invitation of the Savior into you. And then you accept and receive his favor, his salvation, and peace. A different kind. If you have peace knowing where you're going to be forever, it's a different peace than knowing what you're going to do next week, right? If you have a peace that you know you have experienced salvation, freedom, and forgiveness for all your sins, the ones you committed before you knew this Jesus, the ones you committed today because we're still broken, the ones you know you're going to commit tomorrow and, and the next week and the next week until you die, all of them forgiven. That's the good news. That's a peace that goes beyond our understanding. We are invited in this Christmas season to experience that kind of peace. It's the good news. This word peace, I love it in, the, in, the, in Hebrew. This word shalom. Um, shalom, you'll hear like very, you know, traditional Jewish uh, people, they'll greet each other with that. So shalom, shalom, you know. And, uh, and it's, so for them it's a greeting. And, uh, and the word translated into English, this word shalom is, is the word peace, but it means so much more. Listen to this, okay? It means completeness, safety, soundness, welfare, health, prosperity, quiet or quietness, tranquility, and contentment. Who wants that? Shalom. So every time they say shalom, it's like, that's a pretty good greeting, I think. You know, like, like hey, uh, instead of, hi, how you doing? It's, oh, God's completeness, safety, soundness, welfare, health, prosperity, quietness, and tranquility, and contentment upon you. Isn't that a great greeting? That's the promise we have in the peace of God. It's this shalom. We can experience these things only in God's presence. If we choose to not be in his presence and choose to be in the presence of the stress, in the presence of the busy, in the presence of the crazy, the presence of our brokenness or emotions, we subtract ourselves from the peace he has already offered us. Those are our choices. We are not robots. He made us each individuals, and we all make our own choices. And so we, this Christmas season, can walk out of loneliness into his presence and experience his peace that he promised. That's my hope for us this season. Final fill in the blank for you guys who are wondering what it is. The reality is that Jesus is the source of our personal peace. Nothing else. There's no other thing that can fill that. There's no other good experience. There's no perfect Christmas present. There's no like financial situation for you to be in where finally I can have some peace because we're okay financially. Or there's no, no perfect vehicle that's never going to break down. It's going to break down. Right? There's no perfect relationship because your relationship's going to hurt sometimes. All of the perfect source of peace is Jesus, and that's it. And that's it. Jesus is the source. And that's who I want us to run to. Let's not be a Grinch. <laughs> and for some of you who are curious, how's Tim going to connect a movie with the Bible? I just did it. All right. <laughs> um, so there's some of you in this room, though, these two things are very real, though. Like, they're not kind of real. Like, your circumstances are crap. Like, there's no other word for it. I need to know Jesus is with you. Whatever you're going through, I know there's marriages that are on the rocks. I know there's people arguing with one another. I know there's, there's feeling a deep loss. I, don't let the enemy get in the middle of it. You are only in charge of leading you. You cannot control other people. And some of you, especially during the Christmas, your control grip gets really tight. You can't do it. When you live life open-handed, you're in a position of releasing and 
Some of us need to release some things to God. And we're in a position of receiving. Our hands are open to Jesus. Give me your peace. Give me your presence. God, I pray during this time, during this season, that you will bring us into truth. That as the world and the culture and consumerism and busyness and stress and arguments and relationships and all the things that cause us to run away or to, to, to lick our wounds or to, to cope with, with dangerous things or whatever all those things are, I'm praying in the power of the Holy Spirit over us that we would choose to walk in your presence and in your peace. We would set aside the world. We would set aside our own sin and poor choices. And that we would run to you during this season. Let's stay in this kind of mode of just listening to God, okay? And listening to His Spirit for a moment. And then just a couple of challenge questions this morning. One is for those of you in the room that, that you know of some lonely people. Maybe you know somebody who's by themselves. You know something's going on in their life and they've started to seclude themselves. Listen, as a Christ follower, I'm, I'm going to challenge you to, to bring your light, the Christ in you, God's presence in you, and show it to them. Go to them. Encourage them. With a text or a phone call or a knock on the door, because nobody should be lonely. Nobody should be lonely during this time of year, especially. And so I'd encourage if you know somebody who feels that way or is experiencing that, let's, let's be a church that shows the light of Christ to them so that they can start seeing God's peace and presence through you and through your life. I want to encourage all of us to start, if you already don't, to start your day in God's presence. If it means hitting snooze one last time and getting up five minutes earlier, if it's even just five minutes in God's presence, you're not working on your task list, you're not thinking about what's going on that day, you're just being with Jesus, you're just praying, you're just talking to Him. Let Him know what's going on inside of you and let Him meet you and be present with you so you can release the stress and the loneliness to Him. I think about our Savior in the moment that he felt the most lonely. Because we know that Jesus experienced everything. Like, he didn't, he did it sinlessly. I mean, he didn't sin at all. He was perfect. But he experienced and felt and went through the things we did. And the moment he was on that cross, the moment he chose to do his Father's will, go up to the mount carrying his own cross and being nailed to it and that was the loneliest moment of our Savior's life. When he gave his self up to death and cried out, Father, why have you forsaken me? I mean, separation in that moment. And the thing is that moment of Jesus' loneliness paid the price so that we never have to be alone ever again. So he paid for loneliness so that we don't have to. Isn't that a good word? Jesus paid the price so you don't have to be alone. <laughs> that you can be with your Heavenly Father forever. That you can experience God's peace and presence. And if you don't have that this morning, if you've been one that you haven't walked with God, you don't have a relationship with this God I'm talking about, you can start it right now and you can start it today. You don't have to climb into a hole. You don't have to become a Grinch. You don't have to point at Christians because we're hypocrites. Yes, we are. <laughs> we're just sinners just like you are. The only difference is we're saved and forgiven, and we want you to experience the same thing we have. So don't blame other Christians for not becoming one. Look at the cross. Look at the Savior. Look at Jesus, the Messiah, the Savior of the world. And so if you want to pray and you can start that relationship, I'm going to pray and you can pray to God and invite him in right now. You can make a proclamation to this God who loves you 
and you can experience his presence and forgiveness today, right this moment. And if that's you, you can just pray this with me. And I'm going to ask everybody just to spend some time in the presence of God. And maybe you know somebody who needs Jesus. I'm telling you, this time of year is the time to invite them. This time of year is the time that they would actually show up to a church to hear how the heck is a pastor going to preach about the Grinch or Elf, for Pete's sake. Like, we're going to have some fun, but we're also going to learn some truth. So I want us who are Christians, you need to be praying for the people who are lost around you and not just praying for them, invite them. Walk next to them. Be the light in this dark world. But if you want to join that light today, if you want to walk with Jesus and you want forgiven of your sins now and forever and to have this peace that I'm talking about, you can pray with me. Let's all pray together. And you can pray this out loud. You can say, God, I believe that Jesus is your son and that he died on the cross and he paid for my sins. Should have been me on the cross paying for my own. And he paid for them. God, I pray that you would forgive me of my sins, that you would enter into my life, that you would give me the Holy Spirit, you, that you would bring me into eternity one day, and I give you all of who I am. So come into my life right now, and I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And for all of us, I want you to hear a word, because somebody needs to hear these, and I'm just going to read some scriptures, and and sometimes we do this here at New Hope. We meditate on God's word. Like, we just listen. And as we listen and we meditate, we ask the Spirit to reveal truth to each of us individually. I'm going to be reading some passages. And you can even close your eyes in an attitude of prayer and just listen for a moment, okay? As I read these scriptures and see what he might want to say to you in this time of response. Hebrews 13, 5. He says this. Never will I leave you, and never will I forsake you. You are not alone. Matthew 10, 30, and even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. You are not alone. Psalm 23 says, I, or am I only a God nearby, declares the Lord, and not a God far away? Who can hide in secret places so I cannot see them, declares the Lord. You are not alone. Psalm 145, the Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and he saves them. You are not alone. Matthew 28, 20, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. You are not alone. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 says, don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's Spirit dwells in your midst. He is inside of you. You are not alone. Matthew 1.23 says this, The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which is God with us. You are not alone. God, thank you for your word today. I pray for each of us that we would receive it right where we're at, and that we would take the next step of action that you call us to, whatever that might be. I pray for those this morning that just started their journey in relationship with you. Lead them more and more, that they would experience your presence more and more, and that they would choose to be still and quiet before you each day and read the Bible each day and, and understand who you are. And I pray that for all of us too. Let us not live in stress and loneliness. Let us live in your presence, experiencing your peace this season. And we just ask this in Christ's name alone. And everybody said amen. 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 Awesome. Well, 